personality is essentially this idea that people have these enduring, organized, integrated kind of traits, properties about themselves that are more than just kind of their random fleeting everyday behavior, something that's consistent, that's enduring, that is predictable in some sense about how someone's going to behave. And this very idea that there is something called personality, you know, it's very intuitive. It seems obvious. But in fact, there was a controversy again. Uh, the same Walter Michel, who is behind the, the marshmallow task, uh, had this uh, very important uh, paper and really raised this question of, you know, is there really something consistent about people's behavior or are we just really more a product of the circumstances? And as usual, you know, it's always both, right? It's not like somebody's personality is so strong that it kind of pervades any given situation. Everybody's always responding to external forces to at least some extent, some more so than others. You, you have this interplay between personal trait-like personality factors and these kinds of situations. And so both factors are, are at play. But I think everybody now agrees that there is this, it is useful to talk about uh, personality and these traits. And this is in part because there's been a lot of success in identifying a very consistent framework for understanding what those traits are. And this is known as the big five model of personality. It goes by the acronym of OCEAN, which is the first letter of each of these different uh, five trait factors. And this big five kind of framework has been statistically derived using kind of objective mathematical techniques to factor analyze uh, people's responses and behaviors according to a number of different types of surveys. And the fact that multiple different groups have, have repeatedly and convergently found these same kinds of factors gives us a sense of some kind of more objective principled basis for understanding personality. So let's go through what these are. So openness, okay, is the first factor. And all of these um, are described in terms of a positive dimension that where you can be kind of high on that aspect. And then uh, correspondingly, there's always a kind of negative or opposite dimension. So closedness or something. And you could describe everything in terms of either side, but uh, conventionally, we just describe them in terms of this dimension of openness here. And so if you're high in openness, you're imaginative, you're curious, uh, you have uh, kind of intellectual pursuits, creative, uh, that you can kind of picture these types of people, um, versus people who are more kind of down to earth, practical, uh, they enjoy kind of routine, uh, they don't like all that newfangled kind of crazy stuff. Um, and, and this is really one of the big dimensions uh, that aligns with, with political affiliation. Uh, you can kind of see that there, that if you're more traditional, conservative, you're going to be low on the openness scale. If you're more kind of liberal, open to new cultures and ideas and kind of that thing. Um, and the very fact that this is really one of the main kind of personality variables uh, which, as we'll see in the next chapter, is very much associated with a, a reasonable amount of genetic, 50% uh, of gen genetic contribution, you know, makes us understand that a lot of these political things are really more about personality values and, and individual differences, uh, you know, and that's why perhaps we have such strong differences in these cases. Uh, okay, so that's openness. Conscientiousness is this uh, high conscientiousness is the ability to, uh, you know, manage your own affairs, take care of things, be detail oriented, uh, well organized, responsible. Um, people who are high in conscientiousness score also highly on self control and the marshmallow task. Um, and interestingly, this is also associated with higher IQ and. Uh, generalized uh, intellectual ability. And so again, we, we see this really strong motivational component. Am I willing to devote my kind of, you know, time and effort to doing something to be good, to be responsible, to, to, to do things, uh, you know, that, that, that are highly valued as opposed to satisfying, you know, my own immediate desires and needs. Um, and so if you're low on conscientiousness, you're careless, you're inefficient, disorganized, irresponsible, not 
kind of, you know, doing these things you should be doing, but just kind of more impulsive uh, going by your individual whims. So you can really see that kind of self-control dimension playing out there. Um, okay, extroversion is very widely, very easily understood. Uh, people who are more social, energetic, uh, assertive, uh, have, you know, get positive feelings by interacting with other people, as opposed to people who are more introverted as the opposite dimension, uh, tend to be shy, less engaging in, in social interaction. And we'll see in a second that there's kind of different sub dimensions or facets to these that help kind of clarify some of the differences, um, that we can see in some of these terms. Um, Okay, and then agreeableness is, again, this warmth dimension that we've been talking about all along. So how much kind of pro-social, empathetic, warm, uh, compassionate type of behavior do you exhibit and, and thoughts and, and et cetera, versus being, again, sort of antisocial, hostile, uh, lacking in trust, not wanting to engage with people. So we can see here extroversion and agreeableness uh, really map on very clearly to the Susan Fisk interpersonal situation kinds of dynamics that we were talking about earlier. Uh, so those are those same kinds of dimensions here playing out in the context of these overall five personality factor dimensions. And then the last one is neuroticism. And this is kind of uh, fairly intuitive, like overall how much anxiety, uh, emotionality do you have relative to being kind of more even-tempered, calm, comfortable, stable, etc. And I think when you look at each of these things, you can kind of picture different people associated with each of these different factors. And, it, you know, it, it makes a lot of intuitive sense that these are reasonable ways of categorizing people. And again, statistically, these seems to, to, to be reliable and come up over and over again. Um, so the facets, I think, are actually pretty interesting because they seem to it's easier to get really concrete and specific when you think about these facets compared to the overall larger dimensions. And that's because these larger dimensions do have kind of, again, multiple sub, sub dimensions, sub facets uh, within them. We can think about characters in the Harry Potter books that most people know um, as ways of illustrating these different kinds of facets. And so in the case of openness, for example, there's this kind of um, openness with respect to intellectual ideas. So new ideas, curiosity, that kind of thing. Um, and so that kind of aspect of openness in, in with respect to truth is one facet, whereas there is another which is dissociable, which is uh, more of the aesthetic dimension. And this may be more associated uh, with like Luna Lovegood, you know, really into something that's cool and beautiful and um, but nevertheless, maybe not so uh, focused on intellectual pursuits. And so like the Ravenclaws are, are, are kind of stereotypically more of that kind of seeking of truth kind of people. Hippies, in some sense, are, are these kind of paradigmatic high openness in the beauty dimension, really valuing aesthetic uh, things. And obviously artists, you know, your, your prototypical artist is going to be right there. Uh, conscientiousness, you have these two different dimensions of industriousness okay so are you kind of following the rules are you hard working do you do what you need to do that kind of thing versus kind of uh something that's more about like ordering and categorizing and again has a slightly more kind of intellectual aspect to it uh and that's this orderliness uh dimension and so maybe hufflepuff is really paradigmatically industrious hard working you know uh, salt of the earth type of person Whereas orderliness kind of is systematizing, kind of organizing things, again, more intellectual kind of conscientiousness may be associated with, uh, again, we put that on the Raven clause. Uh, for extroversion, the two different facets are the enthusiasm, okay, which is not necessarily so much exactly, and again, these, these play out in the context of social dynamics, but they, they are also more generalizable. And this is another thing we'll return to in a moment. Uh, but sort of enthusiastically social uh, versus more assertively uh, social, okay? Um, so if you're a, an extrovert who's very assertive, that's this kind of classic alpha dominance type of, uh, of social uh, role, as opposed to the more um, kind of 
uh, sort of enthusiastic, bubbly, uh, whatever type of uh, uh, extrovert. And so those are kind of dissociable facets of high extroversion. Agreeableness, again, we have a kind of compassion uh, component there where you really have a very strong level of empathy and understanding. This is again, classically the Hufflepuff uh, school in Harry Potter versus something that's more like reserved and kind of politeness uh, focused. If you're very strong desire to fit in with your in-group, but not necessarily again with that same kind of char characteristic warmth uh, and compassion that you experience in the, in the kind of compassion side of that facet. Um, so that's more like politeness. Uh, and then of course you have neuroticism and this has two different dimensions. One is kind of a volatility and overall kind of variability and emotional response. So somebody who's just really kind of strongly, you know, strong emotions up and down all over the place kind of thing uh, versus uh, a more pervasive kind of withdrawal anxiety uh, and depression level of, of high neuroticism. Um, and so those are two dissociable subcomponents there. And so you can kind of see how those might map on to different people. Uh, Vol Voldemort being our kind of perhaps more volatile person. So Neville Longbottom, for example, early on could be associated with this kind of depressive, anxious person. Uh, and then of course he flowers in the end.